Hello, and welcome to another installment of History for Dummies. Today, our topic will be centered around the 1920s and 30s in what is known as the Harlem Renaissance. As learned previously, following the Civil War, tensions between the races were high, with many former slaves looking for a decent wage and former slave owners trying their hardest to get things back to the way it was. In the southern states, African Americans were still being treated as lesser and forced to succumb to institutionalized racism. Jim Crow laws acted as political chains, stopping newly freed slaves from voting or assimilating, assimilating themselves into society. Then, the United States is thrust into World War I, calling upon all Americans to fight. Up until this point, the United States Army only had 10,000 black men enlisted. By the time the Great War ended in 1918, there were nearly 380,000. During the fighting, black soldiers were still treated worse than white, but to a lesser extent. Here they were, fighting in an unknown land against a faraway threat. Many of them realized that although they were fighting for democracy, the democracy they knew back home was not as great as it claimed to be. During the war, African American soldiers used, used this opportunity to speak to each other to get a better perspective on their problems on the front lines and on the home front. Upon returning, African Americans left the southern states in masses in hopes of finding better opportunities in the north. It's estimated that one million black men and women moved from rural areas to urban cities such as Chicago, Philadelphia, and New York. Here, the industry jobs were plentiful, paid much better than southern jobs, and some of the schools were desegregated. The north was filled with opportunity, especially Harlem, New York. Harlem, which resides next to Manhattan, New York, was originally home to white families until the Great Migration led to a massive influx of African Americans. Many of the housing units were able to multiply, occupy multiple families. It seemed as though Harlem was a place unlike any other, in which a black man could walk down the street without being harassed. The neighborhood became an oasis for expression, whether it be artistic, musical, or literary. Clubs and theaters provided platforms for many young artists to show their talents to the world. At the height of the Harlem Renaissance in the mid-1920s, people would flock miles ar from miles around just to see Louis Armstrong or Duke Ellington play. It's difficult to determine who the founder of the Harlem Renaissance was because there were so many influ influential people in the area at this time. However, one person who had a major hand in the movement was a man by the name of Elaine Leroy Locke. After receiving a degree from Harvard and being the first black man accepted in the Oxford University as a Rhodes Scholar, Locke went on to share his ideas on race. As said earlier, many black Americans returning from the war felt the struggle between expressing their culture and suppressing it. Locke encouraged all people, not just black and white, to have patriotism for their country while maintaining pride for their culture. He wanted to strengthen American culture by bringing people together. During this time as a scholar, he spread his word to the universities and NAACP chapters across the country. In his 1925 book titled The New Negro, the novel focuses on what he called the New World, which was a place in which people, no matter their color, could express themselves freely. He included the work of many other black artists in his book, including W.E.B. Du Bois, Langston Hughes, and Zora Neale Hurston. The term New Negro refers to finding a cultural identity, being proud of it, and not easily submitting to the practices of racism. By using the works of black poets and writers, Locke spread his word far and wide across the country. Not only did African Americans find encouragement, but some whites also changed their perspective regarding black culture. Although this movement did originate in Harlem, Elaine Locke's book spread across the entire country. On the artistic side of things, Nightclubs in Harlem offered musicians and singers a chance to show their talents to the world. Places such as the Cotton Club, the Savoy Ballroom, and the Apollo Theater did suffer from prohibition, but that doesn't mean the crowds didn't show. These places offer, offered a variety of entertaining music, dancing, and shows to guests, almost all of which were performed by African Americans. People such as Duke Ellington and Louis Armstrong and Cab Calloway all expressed their culture on the stage, which led thousands of people to come and see for themselves. Thanks to these clubs, jazz became a staple in the identity of the new Negro. Much like Elaine Locke's ideas on having a cultural community, it may seem like a single jazz player is just letting out a series of unrelated notes, but when people play together, it creates something much better. 
Before Hollywood even existed, Oscar Micheaux became the first black independent filmmaker. During the next four decades, Micheaux would go on to create 40 films, over 40 films, all targeted towards black audiences, which was an industry first. For the first time, African Americans weren't portrayed by whites in blackface. He incorporated intellectual and sophisticated blacks into his characters in order to entertain black audiences in a positive light. Not only did he entertain, he also made social statements in order to open the eyes of his viewers. During this time, there were many writers, poets, and art artists who were held in high regard. The poet Claude McKay, for instance, was born in Jamaica and migrated to the U.S. in 1912. Upon seeing how African Americans were treated, he decided to put his observations into his work. McKay didn't shy away from pointing out the harsh reality of racism in his poetry, which allowed black poets to be able to discuss their own stories of racism. He urged other black Americans to stand up for themselves against oppressive ideals. Langston Hughes, another poet of the time, encouraged black folk to express themselves freely. At the time, African American art was dismissed by white as not real art. Hughes wanted blacks to ignore them and focus on celebrating black culture and expressing themselves without any shame. Aaron Douglas was one of the biggest painters and graphic artists of the time. He aided Elaine Locke in illustrating his book, The New Negro. His drawing often illustrated African American history and mixed elements from both African and modern techniques. His murals and illustrations were used in magazine, book covers, advertisements, and paintings. Prior to Aaron Douglas, no artist had used such a unique style to depict blackness in such a positive way. The magazine Fire, two exclamation marks, it's not a typo, intended to use literature in order to help its readers become enlightened during the Harlem Renaissance. The name was devised by Langston Hughes, a black novelist and poet, who wanted people to burn up their old way of life and be reborn into someone who was proud of their heritage, in other words, a new Negro. Issues of this magazine feature black storytelling written by black writers. Fire is yet another form of art that was intended to change the perspective of its readers towards the New Negro Movement. All in all, the New Negro Movement, otherwise known as the Harlem Renaissance, allowed African Americans to have pride in their heritage and culture. The immense popularity surrounding artistic expression helped integrate whites and blacks. The love for music, writing, paintings, and poetry brought a positive sense of community back into black culture. The freedom of expression was finally available to African Americans. This cultural freedom gave blacks much more agency in their lives. This movement paved the way for civil rights activists to be able to bring masses of people together under one cause. Elaine Locke's work influenced many civil rights activists such as W.E.B. Du Bois and Martin Luther King Jr. Last but not least, the influence of jazz forced the genre into the mainstream. Without the Harlem Renaissance, music such as rock and roll and rap may never have come into existence. The Harlem Renaissance marks the beginning of the free man's culture in America and is therefore a major component of what America is today.